Hey guys, and uh, welcome to this little little bit of a different video here um, from me today. And uh, it's because we got this sent in to us. This is Asset Drop. This is one of these monthly subscription, get a little box, you have some stuff in there and you either get to, you know, play with it or paint with it or whatever you want. Um, this is November's box uh, that was sent through to us. And I thought, let's give it a try because it comes with some uh, a selection of paints and hobby material and as well as a leaflet and within the leaflet it has instructions on how to use the paints you get in the box so i'm gonna have to try it out really i mean that's that's the best way to test anything like this so let's get over to the table and let's show you what comes in november's box All right let's just open this up and see what we have so the first thing is the guide which is november 2017 and this has everything in here uh, to do with the paints that we've received. And uh, I'm quite liking the look of this, of the ammo metallics here. And uh, I'm going to be trying that out for sure. So let's... Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Let's just tear it. All right. Let's have a look. We got sugar. We have a, a good little dose of sugar because that's exactly what we need when we're going to paint something. We need steady hands, guys. Steady hands, acid drop. <laughs> I will eat those later. Um, Alright, so let's see. We have this stuff, which is Coat de Arms Muddy Green. I believe this is a texture paint. We're going to have to check that out too. Uh, we got a brush, which is coat the arms again and it's a size 3 brush so it's a good base coating brush probably perfect exactly for what you need for what's in here we have Meg Jimenez yes please Jimenez has a fantastic paint range and these are two of the, the metals I will assume old brass and brass going to be used for the Stormcast Eternal Move that out of there. we also have Broken Toad Pigment Powder uh, which one is this? Grimy Dirt Looks like a quite decent sort of middle brown sort of pigment powder. And we have some secret weapon stuff too. And these again are the paints. So tire black, rubber, and rubber highlight. So you can see where this is going with the contents of uh, this box. So let's move said box out of the way. Put that down. And let's just line up what we have. So good texture paint, some pigment powder to play with, we've got a brush, we have our rubber colours and we have our metallics. So I have a feeling it's just going to be a matter of I'm going to pick two minis. I already have picked two minis. So I'm going to read over the manual and uh, I'm going to pick two models, get them ready to go and we're just going to try them out one at a time. So I think I'm going to try the Stormcast Eternal first and uh, I have a nice miniature in my head uh, from Shade Spire that I'm going to try this out on. All right, I have my Shade Spire Mini, which is the uh, the female Stormcast Eternal. I, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, I was told, but I've entirely forgotten. Um, so let's start with the metallics as highlighted in our little book, which is class because this has some nice little tips for working with metallic paints. And now we get to go on to the stage of using ammo metallics. Now its first stage here is it tells you to um, you know, base coat your model in black or brown primer uh, and then also mix perhaps a one-to-one -one mix with the base coat to the metallic to start uh, the layers earlier. However, I've just decided that um, my Shade Spire Mini has been primed black with an airbrush and then given a second airbrush coat of Army Painter Oak Brown. So it's essentially a brown base coat and I get to work from there. So I have some of the gold, uh, some of the old brass in my wet palette. Yes, I'm using a wet palette today. How, how forward thinking of you, John? I know, right? That's exactly, exactly the kind of thing that people don't expect me to do, but yet I will do it. So let's see what the consistency look like. Okay. Now, this will take possibly two coats, maybe a little bit more, uh, according to the guide, and I totally agree with the guide in that regard. So let's start putting the first layer on. And 
according to the booklet, you don't need to really thin uh, the ammo metallic paints as their consistency is quite good. And I'm tending to agree with that. Just as I'm starting to put the, the paint down, it just seems to sit rather nice. So I'll do a little bit more here. I'm just going to paint the whole model. I know that not all of her would be gold, but I'm going to give the whole model a, bit, a coat of this and bring it all up. That'll give us a, a better idea of how this paint actually sits. So let's have a swish. I think after the first coat we'll come back and uh, see what we think of it and then we'll start applying the second coat. With the first coat down and dry, or mostly dry, um, the paint, uh, the leaflet recommends that you leave 24 hours between coats or, you know, it takes 24 hours to dry. Um, but a radiator helps too. So <laughs> what I've done now is uh, to ensure that I, well, to ensure that I've done it right, um, I've shaken the pot up a lot more and put another daub of it onto my palette here. And the consistency hasn't changed from shaking it up a bit more, but the colour seems a bit richer. So it's now time to add a second coat and we'll see uh, what difference this makes. So let's just start applying this and see what happens. I think we're already getting a good result from this. So and like I said, you know, this paint can take 24 hours to dry. So you don't necessarily have to be in a rush if you're just trying this stuff out for the first time. So let's see what happens with the second coat. And hopefully it should only take two coats. So we'll just keep going here and see what we look like. It's already looking pretty decent, I think. Let's see if I can get it into better focus for you. I think that's about right. And you can already see the difference that that second coat is starting to make, which is absolutely great. So I'm going to push on and uh, get the second coat down. And once it's dry, we can come back and start looking at what makes uh, this technique uh, viable. So now we have two coats of the brass down, uh, the old brass. It's starting to look a lot brighter and a lot more rich. Now, the book suggests on uh, step four. Step three is essentially saying, um, in this case, step three is essentially saying leave areas out if you want to apply some shading, uh, which is fine. You know, if you have one coat of brass down, just leave it there if that's a shaded part or, um, you know, essentially do that or just leave it completely unpainted. Uh, the step four is apply around three coats of the, the old brass and you have to make sure that this is fully dry before you move on. Now I am going to apply a third coat here, uh, but it's going to be a bit more pointed and a bit more targeted. So what I'm going to do is I've changed my brush from the one that came in the box to one that has a slightly, a slightly finer nib and I've just hit the model. So hang on, that's all right. Didn't do anything bad. Fine. I'm going to apply another coat, but I'm going to focus on the upper areas of the model uh, as the book suggests more or less. And we're just going to apply that now and then let that dry. So let's go to the top of the chest plate and let's go over the forehead of the helmet and then let's see, maybe down one of the thighs. And so get a bit more paint to my brush and stir this up a bit better. You can see how the, the pigment settles when you've left it to sit for a while. Uh, so when it's even when it's on a wet palette, make sure you start it back up. And let's um, let's go down this thigh here as well, just this outer part, down to the knee pad. That should be okay. And then up on the shoulders, I'm going to apply a bit more around here, and then on this shoulder, just around the edge there a little bit. I'll hit the chest plate again. On the top of the forehead. Okay, uh, anywhere else? Yeah, probably along the back as well a little bit. 
let's say a lot here and down there and definitely over the arm a little bit too so let's take this plate and essentially just give the upper half of it another coat top of the hand and let's say down the back of this leg we have the upper part of the calf which looks like a good spot to highlight and then down towards the ankle down there and maybe a little bit across the front too like so and we can also do the feet in as well but just the the outer facing of those plates and what that does is this third layer will give us a little bit of highlighting before we actually move on to the the brighter color which is the the flat brass and um yeah i think i'm gonna let that dry too and when i come back we'll see how that looks and then we can move on onto the highlight steps in the in the uh, manual so with the third coat down and now dry we can see that our storm cast is starting to look pretty decent we're getting that warmth uh, that the pamphlet talks about now they have an extra step in here uh, they call it an optional wash set step um, say 4b and uh, I wouldn't really call it optional at all <laughs> I'm sure a lot of painters wouldn't um, but what it does is it will add definition to the model uh, after putting so many coats of paint on it so for this one I'm using army painter quick shade soft tone as my wash and we're going to apply some of that so I have that on my palette and this is really to bring in the tones and the, the definition of the model a bit more so we'll be looking at areas around the belly and just sort of keeping it focused and into the recesses um, and this is just a step where you know if you're following this pamphlet as you know you're subscribed to it and you're just wanting to try different stuff out you don't necessarily have to do this I guess that's why they call it optional but if you're painting this in a way that you want it to be a finished model at the end uh, then yeah I would definitely suggest doing this so I'm just applying it in certain areas and because it's a soft tone it shouldn't affect the overall look of our paint scheme too much so I'm gonna Make sure I get it into the eyes here because they really lost their depth with all the paint that got into them. So that's where I'm going with that now. And let's just add a little bit more maybe in to the mouthpiece. And we'll um, I'll cut the camera here and when we come back I'll have the wash step done and you can see the difference that it will make. Now that I have the wash down, you should be able to see a bit more definition in um, our character's body. Uh, particularly around the armor joints and on her belly uh, under the chest plate as well has got a bit more shading too onto the shield has a little bit in the recesses and on the back between her shoulder blades and down around her waist uh, particularly got a fair bit of uh, attention with the wash also the overlapping plates on her feet uh, as well now on to the highlight step uh, the highlight steps as shown in the pamphlet are given uh, in green so areas that would be most reflective on this model in particular um, and we're going to be doing a very similar process to that now we're switching up to using the the brass and we're going to be using a bit of a smaller brush for this because I feel uh, a bit more comfortable using a smaller brush uh, for highlighting anyway uh, if you're a new painter I'm pretty sure you could use the the paint the brush that uh, came in the box anyway let's pick out some areas that we want to highlight now obviously the first ones are the top of her head along this crest piece then down on to the top of her chest and then looking at the um, panelling around the edges of the shoulder plates as well. So let's start up here on the top of the head. And we can do as much of this as we want really. Um, on and around the face because the face has some fantastic areas for highlighting. Now I'm sort of merging uh, step five and uh, one of the final steps which is an optional hard edge highlighting. I like to do all the highlighting in one go so I'll be doing larger areas of the gold 
as well, or sort of the brass, sorry, large areas of that, plus a little bit of hard edge highlighting as well, in and around some of the, the smaller details, like around her gorget and stuff like that. But we'll do a little bit of the larger areas. Now on the top of the chest, the way she's shaped, it's good to get a good reflection here and then sweep it over across to the other side like that. So it has a, a proper strong glint on this sort of angular area here on the top of her chest. Now we can also pick out areas on the muscle definition on the, the stomach. So let's go down here and let's pick out these areas here. And I've just made a little bit of a mess there, so it's hard for me to see. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let's actually, before we say all that, let's just um, do a little bit more. And let's look at the shoulder piece here. So around here, and we'll ca catch that curve in the plate rather nicely. Like so. I think that's going to look pretty good when it's done. So I'm going to go on ahead. Uh, tidy all these areas up, get all the highlighting in, and then show you what it's like once that's done. That is now the highlighting step done, and I really do believe that the highlighting has brought this model to life. Uh, she looks wonderful, and I think um, the the guys at Asset Drop did a really good thing uh, getting uh, the Mig Jimenez paints in and just writing up a little bit of a report on them and saying, you know, this is how these paints work together. If you take your time, you be a little patient with it, you will find it, that it really does bring the models to life. The The highlighting in areas, because the paint's quite thin, you can do quite subtle, like on her um, right thigh here. It's not a hard edge, it's just a little bit of a, a layer over the top of the old brass, and that really brings out some nice definition in there, especially when the light hits it just right. Uh, she really does shimmer with <laughs> the amount of brass. I'm quite happy with that, uh, but I am going to move on now and I'll do uh, the other tutorial in uh, the book, which is using Secret Weapon Rubber Tire Set. And I think this one's going to be quite interesting because uh, we'll be using another figure for it. Uh, but yeah, I will come back to you very shortly with that.